Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson. We're in Unit G.4, Triangle Relationships, and um, we're going to be looking at G.4.3, Triangle Inequality. And the inequalities are, you know, when we have those arrows kind of pointing to the left for less than and to the right for greater than and things like that. We're going to be looking at things like this. Uh, if I gave you something that had a, a board, let's say that was a unit, one unit long, another board that was two units long, and another board that was three units long, and asked you to build a triangle, could you do it? And this picture right here illustrates how that won't work. Uh, if you take a look at the one and the two, if you can imagine them going up and down along the blue arcs there, if they were to move up and down, you'd see that when they come down, they'd meet right at three, right right at the, the length of three. It, as soon as you lifted them up, the um, the two boards would separate and you would never be able to get them to, to come together to build a triangle. Those one and twos are just too short to be sides of a triangle where another one is three, a length of three. And so we're going to kind of analyze that in this video and make sure you understand what are possible sides that you actually build a triangle out of. Let's get started. So now I have uh, down at the bottom of this a uh, something that is a unit of two and something a little sl slightly longer, a unit of three, and then one that's uh, a unit of six. And I want to know, are those long enough to be uh, three sides of a triangle or, or correct lengths to be sides of a triangle? And what we find out is that they're not. They're too short again, right? So, you know, if I was to take this and let's say put it so that it touched that end down there, and then I rotated it, let's see if I can do it without changing its length, I rotate it up, I take the other one and put it on it, and rotate that one up, let's see if I can do that one, they're just too short. And so we want to be able to come up with a strategy. If I give you three sides, would you be able to tell me uh, they are possibly three sides of a triangle? So let's take a look at this theorem. It says the triangle inequality theorem. It basically says in a lot of words something very simple. It says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle has to be greater the length of the third side. Now we all know that there's three sides, and what they're saying is, if I had, um, if I have some sides of a triangle, right? If I was to take any two sides and add them up, it would have to be larger than the third side that I haven't talked about yet, right? So that would be one set. Certainly, eight and three is greater than five. Then I would check three and five and see if it's greater than eight. And that didn't work, okay? So the theorem says that 8, 3, and 5 don't work because two of the sides do not add up to be greater than the third side. So I would know that those are no good. Now, certainly I could um, even just add a point 0.1 onto this. And now I have a, a 3.1 and a 5. This is 3. 0.1 plus that's 8.1. When I add those together, right, 8.1. That's greater than that third side, so I know that works. Now, if you look over here at this inequality statements, there's three of them here, and basically it's stating in a very formal way what I just showed you. If I grab any two side lengths and add them together, they have to be greater than the third side that I haven't dealt with yet. Okay, now I I put that here to kind of say, hey, in math we have some very formal statements. If we understand those statements in a very untechnical way, that that's still good with me right now. But more importantly, what I want to point out is that these statements. Um, if you look at the the letters, there's no bars above them, and that's because when I write it without a bar above it, I'm saying their length, their their actual physical no, numeric length. So I'm not talking about their name. If I take xy, which is the very first state piece up there, and write a bar of it, then I'm talking about the side xy. And you should be able to go find that right there, right? But if I asked you xy like this and put an equal sign after it, I'm asking you for the measurement. Now, how do you already know this about, hey, the other two sides have to add up to be larger than the other one? 
Well, you know, I don't know about you, but my mom once told me that the quickest distance between two points is a straight line. You know, so let's say that this was eight, right? Eight miles, whatever. You're going from your house to the school. Straight there is eight miles. You have a friend who lives um, two miles over in the different direction. And he lives, uh, let's say, five miles to school. So now my mom told me the straightest distance between two lines or two points is a straight line. That's eight. Now, if these twos and the, the two and the five were real, if I could really drive two miles to my friend's house and then five miles to the school, if that was actually possible, then that's the way I would drive every day to school. I'd drive way out of my way to go seven miles, because two plus five is seven, versus going straight there of eight miles. That's just silly talk, right? There's no logic at all in that. So two and five couldn't possibly be the real distances. I would have to have something that's greater than eight. I don't care if they add up to be 8.03. That still are two sides that um, would be greater than the third side of eight, and that would work. OK, so let's look at some types of problems, basic ones that we're going to be looking at. Um, and make sure we understand our ICANN statements on our student learn map. Basically, it says I can determine if a triangle can be created when given the lengths of segments. So I have a 5, 8, and 4. So what you should do is this. You should go 5 plus 8, right? And ask yourself, is that, I put a question mark there, greater than 4? And it is. Now grab another set. I try to do this very systematically, keep track of it. So I grab the first two. And I grab the last two, and I ask myself, is that greater than the other side that I haven't dealt with? Both instances, that works, right? Now let's grab the last set that I haven't put together yet, five, which is the first one, and the last one, and ask myself, is that greater than the third side of eight? And it is. So these three numbers that I have given you here will build a right or build a triangle of some sort for us. OK. Now, I'm following that theorem that was listed on the previous page, where you check to add the two smaller or two, two sides and check to see if it's greater than the third side. I'm going to tell you a shortcut. And so you're welcome to write this in your notes and use it. Instead of checking all three sets, there's actually a magical way of doing this. Shortcut. Find the two smallest sides and then add them together and make sure it's greater than large. You really only have to look at that pair. The other ones are kind of automatically going to be true. So I look at this, this set, and I say, OK, 3 and 4 are the smaller sides. So what I want to do is I want to check, is 3 plus 4 greater than 7? And the answer is no. Since it's no, these are not possible three sides of a triangle. I could never build a triangle with those three sides. It would be just too short. The sides wouldn't um, be able to be folded up to create a triangle. OK? All right, put me on pause, and I want you to check yourself with this one. And let me know, is it possible for these to be the sides of a triangle? Okay, so now I kind of put you in a predicament. We have a tie. We have two larger sides, right? So let's just see if we can analyze this. Um, let's say, go back to the old method of checking all the sets, 8 plus 2. This is the first one here, right? 8 plus 2. And that's greater than 8. That's good. Now let's take this other 8 here, and we'll say uh, 2 plus 8. Is that greater than 8? It is, OK, so the both of them are working good. And then we'll look at 8 plus 8 and see if that's greater than 2, right? Let's put question marks in front of these or above these. And certainly that's true. So I just know from the oldest method you know, that we had before, check all sets, um, it's definitely the sides of a triangle. Now, the question I'd have for you now, and I want you to put me on pause and think this through. What would you name that type of triangle? I'm just going to draw it here real quick. See if you have the name of that kind of triangle. It's previous class, maybe uh, last year in algebra, or just even seventh or eighth grade math. What do you call a triangle like that? 
we're going to call that an isosceles triangle, and we're just going to abbreviate it like that, a isosceles triangle. Okay, any triangle that has two sides that are the same, isosceles triangle. All right, so sometimes we're not going to be given three sides to see if it works. We're going to be given two sides and then asked, hey, what could be the length of the third side, right? So like uh, 9 plus 5, that has to be greater than whatever this third side is that I'm going to come up with, right? So what is that, 13 or 14 there? So um, 13 would work, wouldn't it? 9 plus 5 is 14. That's greater than 13. So 13 for my third side, the one that hasn't been listed yet, that certainly would work. Would 12 work? Well, of course 12 would work if 13 works because 9 plus 5 is greater than 13, so that works. How about 13.5? Well, that still work? Yeah, because that's 14, and 14 is less than 13. Point. This is uh, There's a lot of answers here I could come up with. Um, could, um, let's say... Uh, 16 work? Well, no, 16 wouldn't work because 16 is not greater than 14, the 9 plus 5. Okay, so what we want to do is come up with a range. Now, I'm just going to quickly write something over here to the left that I don't need you to write into your notes. If I asked you to pick a, a, a number between, okay, so I'm going to pick the lower spot here and the upper spot here. If I'm going to have you pick a number between, let's say, 0 and 10, then that's how I'd write it. So x is um, greater, right? If you look at it, x is greater than 0, right? Because it's on the greater than side. And it's also less than 10. So that's kind of a range, right? So now the problem that we have here is we're looking for a third side to this problem. And there's multiple answers that we can come up with. Some don't work. So we want to come up with a range uh, that this will work. So watch very carefully. Do this correctly one time, and you'll have this for life, okay? So this is as small as it can be, and this is as large as it can be, and it actually can't be this small um, over here. It can't be this small. It's got to be slightly larger or larger than that. and can't be that large. It's got to be slightly larger than that, okay? Smaller than that. I apologize. So I need to come up with how small can the x get. This is how you're going to do it. 9 minus 5, you're going to subtract the 2. Make sure you always put the biggest number first, okay? Over here, what do you think I'm going to do on the right-hand side? Over on the left side, I create a smaller number, 9 minus 5. Think real quick, what do you think I'm going to do with the 9 and 5 on the other side? Nice job. It's going to be 9 plus 5 on this side, and that's going to create the range. So I know that my x needs to be a number bigger than 4, and a, another number smaller, or a number lar smaller than 14. Okay, so will, will uh, 5 work? Can I have 5 as my third side on this triangle? Yes, I can, because it's greater than 4 and less than 14, so that works. How about 6, 7.2, 8? You know, the, I can just check it real quick by throwing it over here and saying, hey, is that number between 4 and 14 it is. Will 21 work? No, because 21 is greater than 4. That's true, but it's much greater than 14. It can't be there. So it's not between 4 and 14. That's how easy these problems get. All right, and that's it. Make sure you've done your, your summary. Um, take a look at the first problem. It's just basically saying which one of the following leads could not be used to, to construct a triangle. Use your shortcut. If you're not sure what I mean, go back and read your notes about the shortcut. Do each one of those problems. Check in it, show in your math. Make sure you show me your work, okay, to get credit. Number two, um, I'm going to give you two sides, and I'm asking you to come up with the the range for that, right? So you're going to want to look back at the problems that we just did and do the range. This one here, uh, number three, you're going to do the same thing, build your range. But now, once you've built your range, go over and check these numbers and see which ones work. And in number four, this is a review problem from the previous section, 4.2. If you haven't done that video, this is a difficult problem. But we did a problem like this uh, in class as well. Uh, and on that video. So you'll want to go and note that it's an altitude. Take that information once you realize what that is and draw it into the drawing. Listen, write the correct equation, solve this the correct way, go back and do this problem correctly so you're not solidifying anything in your brain that's not right. See you next time.